Some of the tensions that were exposed by the crash and its aftermath contributed to the referendum shock in 2016 and the drift away from politics as usual since then. My approach to Brexit has been shaped by the simple observation that no one, however passionate their views on Europe, voted to be poorer. So a successful Brexit in the eyes of the electorate must be a Brexit that protects jobs, businesses, and living standards. So the next Prime Minister will need to complete the post-crash recovery process by rebuilding confidence in our democratic politics and our market economy, demonstrating that it is capable of delivering an economy that works for everyone, where competition delivers for consumers, where businesses are sustainable and reflect the values of the next generation, and where productivity-enhancing technology delivers better jobs and real wage rises for workers, as well as profits for investors. But in doing so, he must not abandon the hard-won achievements of fiscal responsibility, the USP of any credible conservative government. A damaging no-deal Brexit would cause short-term disruption to our economy, soaking up all the fiscal headroom we've built and more. And while fiscal and monetary policy interventions could help to smooth our path to a post-no-deal Brexit economy, both could only be temporary and neither could prevent the economy being permanently smaller than if we leave with a deal. So there's a choice. Either we leave with no deal or we preserve our future fiscal space. We cannot do both. And there are some immutable truths that will continue to shape the Brexit debate over the coming months, no matter who is leader of the Tory party. First, unless there is a general election, the parliamentary arithmetic will not change. Parliament will not allow no deal, and on the evidence so far, Parliament will not support the only deal that is on the table. Secondly, the European Union will not renegotiate the deal. And thirdly, the Irish question, and with it the backstop, will not go away. The irony, of course, is that this is the government that has just led the world by committing to a zero carbon economy by 2050. And as some of you may have noticed, for me too, there is just a scintilla of uncertainty tonight about what the future <laughs> may hold. And that is a good enough excuse for a moment of self-indulgent retrospection. But whatever it is, my future, I can promise you I won't be doing it from an overpriced garden shed on wheels. 